What's going on guys? With the last Surface Duo 2 system update, the camera got a whole heck of a lot better, especially in terms of just the actual performance of the app. Opening the app, rotating the app, moving between lenses, taking the photos themselves. Everything is running much, much better than before, but something that did not improve with this update, not as far as my eyes can tell, was the actual camera photo taking quality. Today, we're going to talk about what I believe to be the best version of Gcam for Surface Duo 2. For the uninitiated, Gcam is effectively the camera app from Google's Pixel devices that has been ported, modified, customized, and added to, and then ported over to other devices for you to download and install on whatever device that you see fit and today's version of Gcam is working quite well and we've actually got an additional noise profile which is meant to improve the image quality a bit further from this particular Twitter user. I'm going to go with Xenox121. They reached out to me a while back and I didn't have time at the moment to really dig into it but I've dug into it over the last couple of days. I've got a bunch of sample photos. I'm going to walk you through how to install this and how to install this uh, noise profile and then we're going to talk about if it's worth doing. How do the pictures look? Spoiler alert, they look pretty darn good. Before we get started though, check in the description for a link to the Discord server. Some of you may remember about a year ago there used to be a Discord server but I started it and I was way too busy and I didn't have time to look at it or do anything with it. Well it is back now so check it out. We've got about at this moment about 30 people in the Discord server over the course of about the last 24 hours. So if you want to check it out please feel free to do so. Come hang out, talk about tech, phones, games, whatever you want to talk about. Be civil, be kind, and have a good time. Okay, so once you're ready to install this version of Gcam, I can assure you, I've seen some people be concerned about if this is safe or not. If it's safe, it's fine, everybody does it. It's a very common practice, installing these external third-party camera apps, not a big deal at all, nothing to worry about. Let's jump over to the web browser here, and this is the website, and it's a little bit complicated, but it's not really that bad. So first thing we're gonna have to do is we need to download the camera app itself. And you're gonna see it here under this link. Now from here, I'm gonna jump over to my phone and show you what we're seeing there. So let me copy this URL and let me go to my Edge browser. And all right, we are now on my phone. So let's scroll down here and let's click on that link. And we are looking for this top link here, AGC underscore 8.4.300, blah, 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 that top one. Let's click on that and that is going to download. Okay, so once this is done, download and you should be able to pull down your notifications here and select that and it's going to pop up and give you this warning here for your security your phone is not allowed to install unknown sources from this app great fine we can fix that though so let's click on settings let's tick that box let's go back and then we can go ahead and install simple as that and the camera app will be installed and we're already a big chunk of the way done with this project so let's go and open up the camera allow 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 it all it's fine done and now you are seeing the other side of my desk where i have some boxes sitting now back on your desktop web browser unfortunately you're probably going to need to do this part on your computer because for whatever reason when i'm on my browser here on my phone there seems to be no link to download the files that i need i don't know why that is but whatever on your desktop the green button that says code which again is missing on my edge browser you're going to download the zip file once you downloaded that zip file, any way you want to get those files onto your Surface Duo, it doesn't matter however you want to do it. I like to use something like CX File Explorer and actually just do it over the network. Go to my download folder, grab the zip file, move it over and do it that way. But plug it in, whatever you want to do, however you want to do it, doesn't really matter. But once you've got it on your phone, you are going to simply click on your settings up there. Click on more settings after that. You are then going to click on lens settings. And then we're going to repeat these steps for main, tele, and wide, but it's the same thing over and over. So we're going to go into main. We're then going to scroll down until you see color management and then look for noise profile. I'm sorry, noise model. Click on noise model. Click on import noise model. And now the files that you just downloaded, this works best if you put this stuff in your downloads folder because that's where it's going to look first. So here's mine here. We're going to click on it. We're going to go into noise models. And since this is our main lens, we're going to select main noise model. Then we're going to click on noise model, scroll up. You're going to be sitting probably here, but you need to scroll up 
and select main noise model again main lens that's the one you're going to use back out go to telly and repeat this exact same thing except for now when you go into noise model and you import and you click through and click through you're going to click on the telly noise model and then you're going to select the telly noise model that will now be there and you will repeat this for the wide angle lens as well and that's it it's done that's everything that you need to do to set this thing up in terms of weird extra stuff the only other thing i would recommend you doing is click on this and turn hdr plus to that one not the middle one but the far right one that is hdr plus enhanced it adds a bit more shutter lag but the picture quality is going to be far better than it was before other than that you're pretty much done now i do think it is important here for me to kind of show you guys how the apps actually run in real time though so let's for a baseline you see you just cleared everything out let's go ahead and launch the stock camera app and you'll see there it is now launching really really quickly as i move through the different lenses you can get a sense there of how fast that's working and as i take a picture you can get a sense there of how that's working the first picture after you first load up the app is still a little bit slow but then after it's been running for a second or even if it's been running in the background like if i opened it closed it and came back it seems like that problem is pretty much gone i don't know what that is but shutter lag is pretty much gone 99 percent of the time let's compare that now to and let's make this fair so let's close this out so that it's not in ram let's compare that to the new camera app so let's launch that and it launches relatively quickly as well now the weird thing about this the way you switch lenses you would think it would be this but this is just a digital zoom in and out the way you actually switch your lenses is by touching here and then touching one of the different magnifications you'll see the app will fully close and then reopen that is a little bit weird i get it i get that that is strange but it does in fact work and that is also where you go to switch to your front facing camera that is something to definitely get used to what about in terms of taking pictures? Let me show you what I was talking about with HDR Plus Enhanced. You can see that is a ton slower than the stock camera app. And of course, you also have the fact that the stock camera app, when you launch it, you get your recent pictures over here as well. So that's something that you can kind of replicate by simply making an app pair between your camera app and say Google Photos or what have you and that would work just fine if you wanted to do that. But honestly, the biggest thing you're going to notice right off the bat is just the speed at which the stock app opens and how quickly it is able to take pictures when compared to this app. This is a bit laggier, a bit slower in a lot of different ways. So, the photos better look really good to make this thing worth using. Let's look at those photos. Okay, so the first image you're going to see is the stock camera app. Then we're going to look at the new camera app, the Gcam camera port. We're going to compare the photo quality here. So this one here is taken on the Surface Duo's stock camera. As I said, HDR is enabled on the stock camera, HDR Plus on the Gcam. And I will show you why HDR Plus, because with just regular HDR, there is no benefit to using this camera at all. And I will show you that after we're done with these. But let's look at this first picture here first. The first thing I notice is the stock camera app has brightened up everything probably way further than it needs to. The interior part of this tree, it almost looks like in Snapseed where you can put in a, a like a spot and then crank up the brightness in like one area. It almost looks like that's what's happened here. There's no shadows underneath this carport at all. I mean, it's not like it's god awful as we let this clear up here. The detail's pretty solid, like it's okay. But then when you go to the G cam, that's much better. That's way, way better. There are, the shadows are still there, and that's pretty accurate from what it actually looked like. The interior parts of the tree here, that's more accurate. It, it was more shadow there than what the, the stock app wanted to show for whatever reason the sky the colors are about the same either way but the shadows are way better on the gcam port and you're gonna find the lighting is the big difference here so moving to the telephoto as we zoom in this is pretty good and if we go to the gcam if you can see a discernible difference it's very very small there might be a touch more contrast on the gcam but they're really really similar Moving to the ultra wide, this is your stock camera. You can see there's still some snow on the ground, some snow in my hammock. And as we zoom in here, let's see what kind of detail we managed to retain here on the stock camera app. Get a good look there. And let's go to the G cam port and you'll see that it's a pretty similar 
photo overall the detail level is pretty similar as well i think that they both did a good job on the telephoto and the wide angle moving to something that's a bit closer this is the stock camera app and this is the gcam the gcam is a little bit cooler in the white balance i think that's the primary difference this is a bit brighter and a bit warmer the gcam is a bit dimmer and a bit cooler the detail level on both looks pretty solid to me let's go back to the stock camera app and we'll zoom in do we see any radical differences here no we don't i think that they're pretty similar here but this is really good lighting and most of the time with good lighting you're going to get really similar images this is with the telephoto lens there and i think this is an interesting spot here because i think that the snow the brightness of the snow i think confused the duo 2 stock camera app. this is weirdly dim and the g cam did not have this problem the colors are more accurate and definitely brighter. I think this is, again, a lighting problem. That's where Gcam really stands out. Moving inside the house onto my little thumbnail creating station, the stock app, this looks okay at first blush until you see the Gcam, and the Gcam does such a better job with handling this bright light, with handling the shadows, the moodiness of this picture. Again, lighting. Here's a picture of my girl copper laying on the floor here waiting for dinner. You see her empty food bowl here she's very cross with me that i've not fed her yet stock app looks okay you can see a little bit of graininess up here i need to dust that shelf off it's looking quite dusty quite grainy there let's see if the gcam port does any better i think that the color temperature again is cooler here that is a warmer picture than that that is definitely a cooler picture let's zoom in do we have any better detail or less grain i think we do it's still a little bit grainy but i think the detail is a bit better let's also zoom in the copper's face here her fur we can see each individual little hair let's go back to the g cam and if we zoom in here uh, i'm sorry this is the stock app rather it's a bit less detailed for sure in particular in these areas here i think that this is a win for the g cam as well this is also using the telephoto lens, and I think that you're going to see here that there's some loss of detail here. Let's pay special attention to the word Wear OS by Google. Those are words, not one word. Let's go to the Gcam, and let's zoom back in, and I think this is going to be a little bit, yeah, definitely more legible. So again, another win for Gcam. When you're inside and the lightning, the lighting comes down a little bit, it's a little bit dimmer, Gcam does step out. This is, to me, a clearly better picture. Here's another good one. Look at this lamp over here. This may as well be the surface of the sun itself on the Gcam. Well, look at the amount of detail that it pulled out. Look at the shadows, the way that things kind of look. Look at the fact that you can see the lines on this lamp here. You could not see that before at all. And just to close the loop here on not using HDR plus enhanced, this is the standard HDR plus on the Gcam versus the stock camera. They are very, very similar. It might be marginally better, but you can see the true benefit is when you use the enhanced version. Looking at the shelf here on the wall, again, this looks okay, but let's look at detail here. Let's look at words. Let's look at lines on Spider-Man's suit. They're pretty hard to see. Let's jump to Gcam and let's zoom back in. Are they easier to see now? I think they're going to definitely be easier to see as things do clear up the Gcam app again in lower light. I'm beating the drum here. Looks better. Let's shut the lights off though and use night mode. Night mode on the stock camera app doesn't look that great. Look at the loss of detail. Look at the graininess here. Let's go to night shot on the Gcam app and that is just a far and away better picture. So there you go. I think it's pretty obviously clear that the Gcam port in good lighting, they're really similar, but as soon as the lighting gets a little bit worse, that Gcam app is a way better option. If you can get away with that additional shutter lag, I think you're going to be really happy with this camera port. For me, I'm going to continue using the stock app for the most part, just because of how quick it launches and how quick it takes the pictures. However, the moment I'm in a little bit more difficult lighting scenario where I want to make sure I get a good picture and maybe it's nothing moving too rapidly, I'm going to switch over to that Gcam port. So big shout out here and a big thanks to Zeno. I hope I'm saying that correctly for sending this my way with your noise profile to improve image quality just that little step further. Links to all this down in the description. Thanks for making it to the end of today's video. And until next time. Stay nerdy, my friend.